I'm here with Greg Cassavin uh, to talk about Pyre, though. We're not here to talk about The Last of Us Part Although 2. Although we could. As, as much as I would love to. Yeah, 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 me too. We're here to talk about Pyre because you guys had some news to share today about the game that you're working on. Yeah, indeed. Uh, we announced today that we have a versus mode in Pyre. Uh, Woo! Which, uh, yeah, we are, we're best known for our previous games, Bast Bastion and Transistor, and those are the single-player only kind of narrative-driven experiences. Uh, Pyre is also uh, a narrative-driven experience, but we have uh, revealed that it's got this versus mode component to it. Uh, we've been getting a lot of questions about whether the game is going to have a multiplayer component, so it's been I was very gonna exciting. Ask, I think that was the first question that I asked you yeah. after I saw the game. Yeah, so we're here uh, taking a look at a pretty, uh, I guess, a pretty action-packed uh, example of what uh, the versus mode is like uh, here in one of the new environments we're showing. It's playable here on the show floor uh, at the PlayStation Experience, so it's been really fun just uh, watching people kind of get their hands on it, be able to challenge a friend. Like, we've always wanted to make a game that you could you could just kind of play with a friend of yours and, and just uh, get together, you know, uh, play it on the couch, kind of arcade style. So we're seeing these two uh, opposing, we call them triumvirates, these teams of three exiles uh, battling for, uh, for a chance to be free from this uh, purgatory setting in which Pyre takes place. Uh, this is a pretty uh, high-level match here. These are, uh, these are members of our development team playing, uh, so you're going to see it moving pretty fast and furious here uh, compared to some of what you may have seen if you've seen uh, previous footage of the game uh, online or something like that. The item that they're passing back and forth, some kind of ball, is there a name for that? Yes, that is an object called the Celestial Orb. Ooh. How dare you call it a ball, sir? <laughs> this, um, I, I'm sorry, the Celestial yeah, no. Orb. <laughs> yeah, I'm totally joking. <laughs> but the, um, yeah, you know, the, the concept of the game is that uh, these mystical competitions take place uh, at certain times when these exiles show up and uh, the stars align just right mm. and this orb comes crashing down and then, and then this competition called the Rites uh, begins to take place. Uh, so you'll see that uh, there, there are these two opposing sides and each of the characters is sur surrounded by a colored aura and as soon as one of the opponents touches that aura, they're banished, uh, so they get taken out. Uh, but there are ways of avoiding that aura. You can jump over, you can outmaneuver, um, and if you grab the orb, uh, your aura is uh, temporarily disabled while you have it, so you're left vulnerable that way. Uh, so the object is to get that orb and to dunk it into the opponent's uh, pyre, and you're trying to extinguish their flame. Feels kind of uh, like an NBA Jam for the modern era. There, uh, there are, we, <laughs> we enjoy uh, NBA Jam quite a bit, as a matter of fact, but there, there are uh, many uh, classic uh, these kind of action-packed arcade sports games that they were first and foremost these really fun competitive action games um, that uh, uh, certainly were were instructive to aspects of the gameplay. Uh, though really at the heart of this game for us is this uh, this, this dynamic between these characters. We wanted to make uh, a character-driven game where these characters have to depend on one another uh, through the course of this journey. Um, and so the the nature of it taking shape into like a this team-oriented uh, kind of structure and this team-oriented competition is very central to the, the themes of the story, though it makes, we, uh, we think, for a very fun uh, competitive action game as well. So throughout the course of the single-player game, I believe yeah. you recruit new members of your caravan and then you yeah. swap them into your triumvirate and all that. How does that work on the multiplayer side? Do, do, the, do you unlock those as you unlock them in the, the single-player campaign? Yeah, so we're, we're still, uh, that, that's a great question. We're still figuring out that aspect, though we, uh, what we're, uh, so, so first of all, for sure, as you, as you play through the campaign, uh, one of the most exciting aspects we think is that you'll be taking on more and more characters of kind of different shapes and sizes. And we, uh, we're really excited for those characters to be available in the versus mode as well. How do they all uh, fit in that, that caravan? Oh, well, you know, it's a, it's a sizable, uh, it's a sizable <laughs> wagon. They, uh, they make room, but part of, you know, part of it for us is like even though the game is uh, about these exiles, right? It sounds like it's pretty heavy. There's some lightheartedness to it as well, and uh, it's almost, we almost play it for comedy that they're all kind of crammed into this thing, and <laughs> they're kind of in an uncomfortable set of, they're uncomfortably close together, you know, on this kind of big road trip, like being all crammed into the back of a Volkswagen or something, having to travel across the country. Um, but yeah, as, as for the versus mode, we want the characters to be available. Uh, I don't think we're gonna, necessarily make you have to, you know, dig for them through the campaign if you just want to dive yeah. straight into the versus mode right away. Sure. So. 
So I think it's it's safe to say that you're the narrative lead at Supergiant Games. Is that, is I, that I do the right? Yeah, I do writing and story stuff among among other things. Cool. Yeah. How, are you uh, uh, implementing any of that expertise on the multiplayer side, or is the multiplayer just a pure gameplay edition? So so for us, it's like the the big the big inspiration for even wanting to do this is like we grew up playing these games, whether it's like Command and Conquer, Star Control 2, or or StarCraft. These games that had great stories um, in the in the campaign and then they had these uh, these multiplayer modes that kind of extend you took those characters from the campaign into the multiplayer so uh, although the the versus mode is like a pure like arcade style gameplay experience the characters are still there um, and their personalities are still there you hear their unique voices and see their portraits and stuff like that so the versus mode isn't strictly story driven but it's based on the context that's set up in the campaign, so it's meant to all be connected that way. Cool. Speaking of voices, I just want you to confirm for me here, live on the air, that the guy who did the voice for the transistor is the same guy who's doing the narration in Pyre. Yeah, that is the voice of uh, Mr. Logan Cunningham, who's the voice of the narrator in Bastion, the transistor in Transistor, and now this character we refer to as the Arch Justice in Pyre, who you <laughs> who you hear kind of uh, presiding over these rituals. What but a yeah, voice! Yeah, Logan uh, is he's he's here uh, actually with us at where's at he PSX. at? Logan, Logan, uh, Logan. <laughs> he yeah, he's an ex we think he's an extraordinarily talented actor. He's a wonderful guy. We. Uh, for us, a big part of the fun of uh, continuing to work together as a team is just everyone who's ever worked on Bastion and Transistor, we're all back together, including Logan uh, working on Pyre, kind of do doing our thing and seeing how far we can stretch what we do. And in the case of Logan, yeah, it's his his talents as an actor are once again being brought to bear, I think, in a, in a unique way. Yeah, you guys are one of the most tightly knit groups of, of developers, of game creators that I've seen. Um, how have you guys learned as uh, as uh, a group of creators over yep. the course of Bastion and then Transistor and now Pyre. How, yeah, you, have you guys just gotten more efficient, or how's that all look? You know, it's it's it, it always has its new challenges. I have to say, like I th I think we uh, in some ways we we make uh, we create our own challenge by trying to push ourselves out of our creative comfort zone with each new game. Each of our games, I think, is quite a bit different than our than our last. Oh yeah. Um, and and so we're learning together and growing together, I think, all the time. And uh, I think a lot of that is is expressed in what, what Pyre is really all about and the kind of interactions that happen even between the characters uh, in the world of this game. Cool. I wanted to talk a little bit more about the single player side yeah. of Pyre, just because I'm so interested in this game and I can't stop thinking about it, even when we're not doing these big shows. Um, I'm just curious, from the uh, development side, from the storytelling side, mm -hmm. what does it look like when you're sketching out the story for a new game? Or I don't know if that's changed across different yeah, games. Yeah, like, no, it's is it, that all is that all determined before you even start programming things? Or yeah, it's a great question. So in in our case, um, the the gameplay and the narrative, we want those things to be as closely connected as possible to to feel like after you finish playing one of our games that you you realize that it's a story that could have only been told like through this particular game. That's, that's really what we want to achieve with it. And that means that a lot of the story development happens in parallel with the rest of the game's development. So we have an outline to the story early on, so we know what, kind of what the theme of it is and where we want it to go. But in terms of the details, those really develop as we figure out the gameplay. And we're kind of, uh, we're pretty touchy-feely, I think, when it comes to developing the game itself. There's no big design document. It's all done very organically, huh. um, just kind of starting to prototype immediately, trying to get to the fun of it uh, as quickly as possible. But then it's really about figuring out what does the game need uh, what's appropriate for the tone and the atmosphere and just building it out as we go, but with a longer view toward where the story is, is going to go so that we have a direction. And then we just kind of fi try to, try to fi uh, find our way there. It over reminds the me of, uh, of the Camerata in Transistor, yeah, where you had kind of the overarching story for the game, yeah. and then it, it feels like you kind of got to go in and have some fun with those different, or not even the Camerata, but the different residents of Cloud Bank. You got to go yeah. and sketch out the stories for those characters to just kind of just inject that much more life into that world. That, that's right, or just look for opportunities to, like, we, we do spend a lot of time just on the world building in pre-production, just figuring out what the setting is, because if you can develop uh, a rich setting, then you could tell a lot of stories in that setting and just all through development figure out, you know, what, what do we, what do we need here to kind of flesh out this world and make everything, you know, again, hopefully feel very connected and, um, and like, it's, like it's part of a big world that, you know, with any luck, it'll feel as though it's a world that existed before you even got there, not just kind of for the sake of the game, but just a whole 
interesting world that you could lose yourself in. I love games that uh, create that feeling for me, so that's that's the our hope with with our own worlds. And when you're when you're building that world, is that is that mostly you kind of dreaming this stuff up, or does it is it like Jen's art oh, plus yeah. uh, you know uh, Amir's creative direction and all that? Does no, it all it, kind of meld together? It, it's a, our team. We we have twelve people. It's it's an extremely collaborative environment. Like we, everybody is feeding off of each other. So I I like. I take point on like the writing stuff, but it's it's Darren's music, it's Jen's artwork, uh, it's it's everybody contributing to it, and we we all are constantly kind of building and iterating off of one another's work. It it like makes for uh, in the best times, it's just a really in, a kind of inspiring environment because you look up and and you see your your peers doing doing amazing work, and it pushes you to want to do your best work that kind of lives up to what they're doing. So for me, like. Writing, writing for these characters, I'm so inspired by just the artwork that Jen creates for them. <laughs> but it's a very, it's a very collaborative process. She'll then, you know, touch up. The, she'll change the way the characters look based on the writing. I'll be like, I wrote this guy exactly to look like. Him. <laughs> so it's, it's very, but, but it all, um, it all just has uh, come together for us in the past through that kind of process. Uh, everybody just doing their part um, to to create a whole that I think is bigger than the the sum of the parts. That's kind of our our messy but creative process, I think, that, that results in the kind of games that we've made. That's awesome. Do you have any hints on when we might be able to hear any new tracks or see any new art for the game? Uh, we, we have, uh, well, I get, is it a new track? We have some new music that's, that's part of the trailer that we released today. So there's some, yeah, we have, we have lots of music in the game. Darren's been plenty busy. Uh, he's our Here, Here's me publicly poking you to yeah, release yeah, no, some new the, stuff. The music has been a big part of our games, and it's definitely no no exception here, but yeah, we um, we shall we shall see. I guess the the game will be out sometime next year. So we've got uh, we've uh, we've got we've accomplished a lot this year. We've still got a ways to go, but yeah, it feels like with a with a telescope, I could see the light at the end of the tunnel. This on is this probably one, the last time you're going to get to say next year. Yeah, that's true. We're pretty soon it's going to be this, this year. One. Yeah, we we're feeling very good about that. So. That's awesome. Well, I'm really excited for Pyre. Thank you very much for joining us. My Is pleasure. there anything that we missed? Anything else that you want to say before I let you go? Uh, I don't. I don't think so. It's just been great to see the show of support here at PSX. Uh, it's been great to see folks trying the game, and and we're always happy to hear from people via Twitter, whatever else. It's just like that's that's what it's all about for us. Just making something that folks who've enjoyed our previous games, we can once again hopefully surprise them and uh, in whole new ways. So. Fantastic. Greg, thank you very much for My joining pleasure. us. They are at Supergiant Games on Twitter. Please follow them. Give them your feedback on Pyre. It's coming out next year on PlayStation 4, and I could not be more excited for it. PlayStation.